distinguished people. God has a people, a church, that is distinguishable or distinguished, peculiar, if you please, different. No matter where they go, they shine. Amen? They're full of miracles and signs and wonders. The signs will follow the believer, the scripture says. When you see a believer, you see the signs following them. You look, look behind them and you see signs following. That should be the order in the church. So, the church of the New Testament is the apple of God's eye. Even as Israel was in the Old Testament. Uh, we're told that Israel or Jacob was the apple of God's eye. If you, if you touch somebody who's from the seed of Israel, Abraham, uh, you have touched God's apple of his eye. And so it is with the church, even better yet. Because the church is under a better covenant, established upon better promises. So if Israel was the apple of God's eye, how much more the church? Hebrews 8, 6 says, But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. So, we're important to God. We shine everywhere we go. God is in us, the hope of glory. If Christ be in you, then you are an overcomer. You ought to live in this world with Christ being in you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we want to read in Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. About Moses and the people of God. Uh, reading from verse 9. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses, and all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Every house, every tent was a place of worship. Every one of our homes should be a place of worship. Amen. 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 You ought to stand by the door and worship Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. I like that. You think he would speak to you face to face? Maybe you ought to stand by the door of your house and worship him. Perhaps he will speak to you face to face. <laughs> Why not? The Lord spake to Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. I mean, they were having a chat. 
Moses and God. They were chewing the fat. If you have a better uh, a phrase to use, go ahead. You know, I don't apologize for, you know, bring it up to date, you know, modern way of talking. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, Departed not out of the tabernacle. So people like to be in the tabernacle, in the church, and some people don't have time. They have time for everything else. But you're welcome to abide in the tabernacle. I keep the lights on all night long, if you would stay. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by thy name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know, I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people, your people. And the Lord said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. I like that. You don't want to go without the presence of the Lord, no matter where you go. If you're in the post office, you want to have the presence of the Lord. If you're in the DMV, you want to have the presence of the Lord. Department of Motor Vehicles, in case you didn't catch on. Oh, I know you know. I'm just joking. <laughs> if you're in the Tops Market or Price Chopper or Wegmans or any of these big stores, you want to have the Lord on your side. His presence. In His presence is fullness of joy. So Moses says, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. We need your presence, Lord. And if you don't go with us when we leave, don't let us go. For wherein it shall be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, Is it not that thou goest with us? Is it not in that? Thank you, my helpmate. Is Is it not in that that thou goest with us? Uh, in plain English, is it not that you're going with us? You're, you're always with us? So shall we be separated. Now that's underlined, separated, because we're going to go back and talk about it. I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth, we are separated from all the people. We're different. We're peculiar. From all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 
So the word separated from the Hebrew pele, P-E-L-E-H. And I taught that word before, it means miracle, miraculous. We are miracle people, miracle producing people. These signs shall follow them that believe. Isn't that what the word says? There's going to be miracles in our lives. We're going to produce miracles because we are different. We are unique. We are the called out ones. Something is going to happen everywhere we go. Something different. A phenomenal thing is going to take place because we're going to be there and we're not alone, but God is with us and something is going to take place. Now, another meaning for the word Pele is also distinguished. So we're talking about the distinguished people, unique people, peculiar people, we're called in the New Testament. A royal priesthood. Let's talk about this generation, the generation of believers who are distinguished. Everywhere they go, they bring a difference. You could be standing somewhere and not saying a word, but something is different about you. God is with you. That's why you're different. Now, if we go to the New Testament, uh, Matthew chapter 4, and we read that Jesus, when he was led up of the Spirit onto the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry, unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I think, did you get to the point where you're just eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and nothing else? And maybe drinking water or drinking soda or drinking coffee or drinking tea, whatever. But you don't live only by that. You as a believer, we as believers, we live by the word. That's why we study the word. As the scripture says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Get filled with the word. God's people are distinguished people they are people who have the word of God proceeding out of their mouth because Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now Jesus was talking about the Father. But he also is talking about the children of the Father who are going to be imitators and Christ-like who are going to quote the word, speak the word. Now I don't need to know it's Psalm 98 verse 20. 10 or 11, but I need to know what it says. So God's people are those with the word proceeding. Now they're, they're distinguished, but they also are distinguished by the way, by the fact that they're only speaking the word. That the word is proceeding out of their mouth. 
all the time. And if it is proceeding out of their mouth all the time, that means they are filled with the Spirit and filled with the Word. And that's why they speak the word of God continuously. What are we supposed to do? Speak the word. What are we supposed to do? Change things around us by speaking the word. You bring a different atmosphere to the place where you go when you only speak the word. And if you have nothing to say, stay, stay quiet and stay put until the Holy Spirit gives you an inspiration. You know, did you, did you ever go to a place where you, you, you felt a, a tug on your shoulder? You know, I, I was in a place several times. And it's like somebody touched me on the shoulder. I turned around, nobody was there. I think it was God telling me to say something. Did you ever feel that? Anybody here? Can I see hands? Like, like you felt like somebody is, is, is tapping you on the shoulder. I mean, the first thing I think is, you know, if I don't see anybody, it must be God. I mean, I might be off, but I, I, I better be off that way than some other way. So we need to speak the word of God continuously. Now, if it's not, if it's not studied, it's not going to come forth. And then, you know, the scripture says in 1 Peter 4, 11, if any man speak, talking about believers, let him speak as the oracles of God. Whatever God says, you speak it, you repeat it. Whatever he tells you, you feel that tap on the shoulder? Yeah. Okay, okay, I will. Now, God's people are distinguished. They're different. And they're the people that have the word proceed out of their mouth. Why should the word proceed out of your mouth? Because people need wisdom, need direction. And how are they going to get direction from you as a child of God if you don't know the word? Okay. So you, you're in agreement? The word should proceed out of your mouth. God's people also learn to wait. The distinguished people, the peculiar people, they need to wait on God. That, that means to expect things to happen. That's what waiting is. We went to the Motor Vehicle Bureau the other day in Circus. Man, that place was a disaster. And, and they told us, after we stood in line, there was 100 people in front of us. We got to the... To, the teller there, or, or the lady behind the desk, and she said, oh, I'll give you a number. We said, how long is that going to be? She said, about three hours. I said, I'm going to Rome. <laughs> I'm going to the village of uh, Canastota or whatever. I'm not going to suck. I didn't want to wait, but if it was God says wait, I'd be waiting. If God promised something, I'm going to wait. Amen? God's people always learn to wait, expecting things to happen. There's an illustration in the Old Testament of this concept in the story of Joseph. Joseph? was told in dreams about his future. 
Remember some of the dreams? Like his brothers are going to bow down to him. His parents are going to bow down to him. My, my, my. He was so young and immature that he went excited. Ha! <laughs> Called his brothers. Come on, gather together. I got to tell you a story. I just had a dream. You're going to bow down to me. Uh, he, he thought they're going to have a, a feast and a celebration and, uh, and they're, they're going to throw a party because he had a dream. But instead, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to get rid of him. He was naive in the beginning. God told him the word that was going to come to pass, but he had to wait. And during that waiting... There was growth, maturing, and growth. Just because God tells you something, you don't run to the streets of the city telling everybody God told me something. Got to use wisdom and be mature. Just don't be like Joseph. But Joseph got himself in trouble. Joseph. So he got himself in trouble. And the brothers, instead of being happy for him, as he thought they would be, they plotted to get rid of him. Wouldn't you do the same? Especially if there's jealousy. <laughs> So during the, four, the course of his following trials, he was thrown into the pit, sold into the Egyptian, Egyptians, ending up in the house of Potiphar, wrongly accused, winding up in the prison house, all of that showed contrary results to his dreams. Do you ever have a dream? Did you ever have a word and all of a sudden something happens and you say, it's impossible. Whatever that word was, it's not going to happen because of what this bad thing that just happened to me. Is that what, what you do or do you focus on the word and wait? So he waited. Even though his circumstances seem to contradict the fulfillment of these dreams. He could have given up on God. But he waited. And he matured. And grew spiritually. And that's what brought him to become a distinguished ruler in the land of Egypt. We have a story about Jesus and the disciples in Matthew 23. When he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. Now he had told them, let's go to the other side. So on the way, Jesus falls asleep in the ship. And there was a storm that hits the ship. And the ship is almost capsized. It was terrible. Uh, I can see the disciples saying, well, he said, let's go to the other side. That's his word. We're going to make it to the other side, I think, because he's a master. He knows everything. He knows about the storm. How come he goes to sleep? Are you kidding me? You think God is asleep because you're going through storms? I don't think he's asleep. He neither slumbers nor sleeps, the Bible says. So, I mean, I can see Peter and John, they were arguing, who's going to wake him up? Don't you dare wake him up. 
Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna drown. You better wake him up. So John, he was very polite and very nice and very loving. He gets by Jesus and says, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, we're, we're dying. We're going to be killed. We're going to die. We're going to drown. Jesus wakes up and says, what's the matter with you? He talks to the wind first and the waves and they stop moving. Become peaceful. Then he turns around. He says, where's your faith? <coughs> Listen, he told them, let's go to the other side. And they go to the other side. They go through the storm. And when they got to the other side, it was not over with yet. There was another trial. Two men filled with demons waiting for them. They will make sure that they can't go through. The way was blocked. The welcoming committee, the two demoniacs, says, come on, the sea didn't get rid of you. We're going to get rid of you and tear you to pieces. But you know what? Jesus was there. And the demon demoniacs had to surrender. And the demons had to, to get out of them. And there was peace. See, sometimes we're promised something. The word is saying something. And we want to go by the word, but it seems like in between there's some period of time where some storms are coming our way in hardships. And what do we do? Do we really wait? The people of God that are distinguished and they, what they have is the word of God proceeding out of their mouth and what they have also is a waiting ability, being patient, knowing that what God had promised will also come to pass. In due time, In Habakkuk 2.14 says, uh, Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday school at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloom, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.